The goal was to build a system to do imaging with undetected photons, but make it uh, compact enough and stable enough that we could take it out and demonstrate it at events, rather than it being a lab-based system. If you buy an infrared camera, you can just point it at anything and it'll see infrared light. Our system requires us to illuminate the object with the light that we generate and collect what goes through it. So it's, it's, in that sense, it's like an active imaging system. But then we don't need the detector at the end. You can think of it as a system that converts a visible camera into an infrared camera. So you could put any camera you like at the end of one of our systems that we build, and then you can take it from detecting only visible wavelengths to whatever infrared wavelengths you design the system to operate at. As well as operating in the infrared, you also remove any thermal background in the infrared because you ultimately only detect the visible photons. And because it's based on an interference effect, you get this filtering that means that the thermal background doesn't contribute in any way. So when you get out of those longer wavelengths, that people are interested in for things like gas detection and cancer detection. It means that the thermal background that makes infrared cameras so noisy won't be a problem at all for these kind of systems. And so in the shortwave infrared, people do a lot of things like monitoring of pharmaceuticals. You can do a lot of agricultural analysis on the soil. You can look at water content of things. Uh, it gets used a lot in biomedical sciences. And then as we move up to longer and longer wavelengths, people look at things like gas detection. You can look at methane absorption, for example, and then out in the, sort of the fingerprint mid infrared region is where we want to work for things like the cancer diagnostics. One of our team here at Imperial, Professor Chris Phillips, he has a company called Digistain. And what they do is they get breast cancer samples and they can measure at several wavelengths in the mid infrared. And using that, they can give you a, an estimate of the presence of cancer. But they're kind of limited by single point measurements. We can't do imaging because of the thermal background noise. So they would really like to be able to take images in the mid infrared of cancer samples and give this estimate. It would hopefully provide a much stronger case for their technology as well. The, the first one we built was portable, but it did require two people to carry it. It was something more like 60 kilos. And as you can see, the version we've got now is considerably smaller. And that's the progress we've made in the space of sort of two, three years, going from never taking it outside of a lab to having a version where two people could carry it to now having a version where I can bring it up myself on the train between London and Glasgow. And so we can probably build a system like this for about 5,000 pounds. And that's significantly cheaper than a camera in the infrared to do the same thing. So at the minute we can kind of beat the price point of a competitor or a competing technology for this. Working on these systems can be difficult, right? There's a lot of times that things don't work, you don't quite know why, you come up with a lot of problems that you have to solve on a daily basis. And thinking that there's a reason to be doing this ultimately is really helpful to sort of get through those days where nothing quite works. The level of confidence that I have in the technology itself and being able to talk about it is hugely down to the fact that Quantic have put a lot of faith in me to represent them at events where I've taken the system. Feeling valued is really important, especially when the work you do can often be alone in a dark room by yourself, twiddling mirrors for hours on end. It's really nice to feel that that is appreciated. Thank you.